gonna do this. I think we're live. So what's going on everyone? Uh, today we're doing this live broadcast. This is for the first time I'm doing a live broadcast with two cameras right here. And uh, as always, I am going to log on myself, watch it on my iPad, just make sure that everything is on point. Sounded pretty good, right? So how many of you are there? Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna populate here on the iPad the chat, just to make sure that I can chat with all of you guys. Uh, sorry for the delay, okay? So, so sorry for the delay. So we're going to be doing this game today, you know? Double camera, so I'm going to be talking to you, and then we're going to be fading uh, into the camera of um, the close-up. So uh, the idea of doing this close-up is so I can put a video, and you guys can really see what I'm doing, because a lot of the times, you know, when I do this type of um, videos, it's really hard to see what I'm doing. So I can even zoom in a little bit more. And that's what I'm going to be doing right now. So this is going to be my framing right here. So um, how's the sound, guys? So uh, make sure to uh, let me know if there's anything that is not as it's supposed to be. Um, I'm also using a, a microphone here just to improve the sound a little bit better and make it a little more professional. So uh, let's see. So people are saying, where is the feed? Uh, can you guys see the feed? Can, can any of you guys type and just let me know if I'm doing this right? Uh, this is the first time I'm, I'm doing it with two cameras, and I believe it is. Mm, let's see. What's up, Gio? So everything good? All right, guys. So we are going to start this live broadcast, and today we're going to be talking about this machine that I have right here. Um, this is the new Spectra Direct 2, a machine that we released, I believe, uh, early this year. I mean, we actually released it last year. But uh, early this year, we made it, you know, very popular. All the distributors around the world started carrying this machine. Uh, this machine right here is a machine that is a direct drive machine. It, it doesn't have any give, but it does fe uh, feature a lot of new improvements from uh, version number one. Uh, if you guys remember version number one, you know, you have to use a rubber band to, uh, you know, to determine the tension of the needle you had to use a grommet. So with this machine, it's the very first direct drive until this day that has an adjustable uh, needle tensioner for direct drive machines. It's also the second machine that we release with uh, the armature clip. You know, the armature clip, you don't need any grommet. So you basically clip on the needle and you're ready to go. So no more grommets, no more uh, rubber bands. And this is also a machine that was designed to perform with cartridges. So this machine can be used with cartridges or it can be used with standard needles. And this is what we call the crossover line. As you guys can see right here, it says crossover. And this basically means that the machine, you know, can be used with cartridges or it can be used with standard needles. Now, how is the quality of the video, guys? Is it good? All right. Johnny Zuniga, what's up, guys? Robert Webb looks fine. It looks good, brother. Eddie Couture sounds good. All right, well, I mean, I'm happy because um, I'm going to touch the microphone, so it's probably going to be a little bit bumpy. There you go. So this is what we want to look at, the machine. This is the most important part, the machine. So I am going to be talking, and uh, I'm going to be answering some of the questions in the chat. But right now, I want to dive in and show you what comes in the box, what you, uh, what you should expect in the box. And we're going to be talking about all the features of this machine. So moving forward here, um, we're going to open the box. And uh, the first thing you're going to see is this box. Now, this box could have the older logo or the newer logo, which is recently changed boxes. So depending whether you got this machine, you know, a couple of days ago or uh, a month or so ago, you may have a different logo. Don't worry about it. It's still an original FK iron. So these are the contents that you should expect in the machine. Obviously, if you don't have a machine in the box, please give us a call. So uh, that would be a problem. But... Um, at a glance, we have the machine right here. Uh, we have the two cams, uh, the 2.8 and the 3.4. This one is upside down. There you go. So the three, uh, I'm sorry, we have the 2.8 and the four millimeter. Right here, I have the 3.4 and the 2.8 because I was actually using this machine for another live broadcast. So I left the four millimeter here in the machine. Uh, you also are going to have the strip removal tool. I'm going to explain how to use this tool and what this tool is for. And then you have over here, 
a little baggie with a, a bunch of goodies and you know you have some spare uh, o-rings for the tensioner and you have uh, some allen keys and you have some spare uh, screws for the stroke in the event that you lose them or anything like that so let's uh, walk you through uh, this machine. Um, as you guys can see, this machine features uh, a mortable system. This mortable system, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see it even better. So uh, this mortable system is the same mortable system as the Spectra uh, Edge X. And what that means is that you're going to be able to exchange, interchange the motors between one machine and the other. So you can have this motor and actually power uh, Spectra Edge X or uh, Spectra Direct 2. It is also the same motor as the Spectra uh, Direct 1. So if you have a Spectra Direct 1 and you don't want to spend uh, the money in the whole set, you can just get the body. Uh, they're available on the website at fkirons.com and they're going to work just fine. So everything is fully compatible between Direct 1 and Spectra Edge X. Now, this machine, uh, just like the Spectra Direct 1 and the Spectra Edge X, feature the um, the uh, hex drive mechanism. The hex drive mechanism is a mechanism where the stroke remains in the body and the motor engages with uh, this gear right here. You guys can see. There you go. So this gear right here, uh, the reasoning behind this is that this uh, bearing right here where the stroke is mounted is the one that's going to absorb all the load of, uh, you know, the actual load or the radial load, however you want to look at this and therefore protecting the motor. So the motor is always going to spin, con uh, spin concentrically. Uh, it's never going to have actual, you know, axial or radial load and uh, you know, your motor is going to last longer. So that's a good thing right there. And we have mm, you know, migrated this system from the Direct 1 onto the Spectra Edge X and now it's back here in the Spectra Direct 2. Uh, the next feature that you're going to see in this machine uh, at a glance is the new armor to clip. The armor to clip is basically uh, a clip that allows you to clip on the needle without the need of any grommets. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. The other thing that makes this machine so special, and I'm so excited about what we have achieved in this machine. I mean, it's a simple uh, mechanism, but no one thought about it. And I'm glad that we did because it really made the life of a lot of tattooers a lot easier. Uh, right here, you have this little dial that you can dial and actually adjust the different uh, tension in your needle bar. So as the, you know, as you have the needle mounted here on the machine, you can actually micro dial the tension in the needle. And if you remember the Spectra Direct 1, you can only have one rubber band, two rubber bands, or no rubber bands. And then if you would want to change, you know, the tension, you would have to uh, basically, uh, you know, change rubber band thickness or anything like that. And there's a lot of times when you want to use a machine and you wish you could just micro dial the tension of the needle bar. And with this mechanism, you can do, I mean, there are ways that you can do it, bending the needle, you know, in different ways, but right here, you can do it on the fly. So you don't have to bother with breaking apart your, your mechanism and, you know, start uh, tampering with the needle. So right here, uh, basically you are going to turn this little not right here either to either direction and you're going to get more or less tension. It's also spring loaded. So it's really easy. You, you just barely touch it and it's going to, it's just going to move just fine. Um, moving forward, we have migrated from the Spectra Edge X, the same floating collet vice system. We call it multi-vice because it would allow you to use basically every grip out there, uh, on the market. Uh, this, um, Chuck and Collet system, you know, was first introduced in the Spectra Edge X, and a lot of people really, really uh, dug it. And again, uh, when we introduced in the Spectra Edge X, was the very, very first machine with a floating Collet uh, feature. So there were some things like that, but no machine had a floating Collet where you can actually remove the Collet. Um, so pretty happy about this one. It works so well. Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, a lot of other builders have kind of like got inspiration from this and basically uh, it became a standard uh, these days in uh, vices for uh, tattoo machine. And we're happy that, you know, we took part of this uh, uh, change in the industry. So uh, whatever, um, that's the, the floating collet vice system. So we have that, we have uh, the, the tensioner, the very first direct drive with tensioner and also the very first direct drive with armature clip. And uh, this armature clip, uh, you're also going to find it in the Spectra Halo 2. So the Spectra Halo 2 
was the first machine to have this type of mechanism right here. Uh, what else? Okay, so the next thing is that this is the, also the first, well, actually it's the second machine featuring the uh, stroke app system. The stroke app system, you know, was introduced in the Spectra Direct 1, and basically what it allows you to do is changing this cap right here uh, to alter the stroke. So uh, the machine, like I mentioned before, it comes with two in the box, so you can simply remove the screws, you know, uh, remove the cap and... Uh, you know, and change the stroke. So that's very, very, very easy. Uh, before I move forward with more uh, um, more features, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, read the chat because it always gets really flooded with comments. So let's see, we have, um, so everyone is saying that it sounds good. Okay, 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 quality is perfect. I'm shooting actually with two 4K cameras right now. I don't know if the feed is actually coming out in 4K, but the cameras, you know, are filming 4K, so probably it's down, uh, down sample to whatever uh, higher resolution for YouTube. Uh, so, uh, tat tattoo size, say my boss just picked up one, uh, just picked one up last week, and the black and gray shading on it is so smooth. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, okay, I love my Halo, but I was super impressed. Thank you so much, man. Um, what else? Prestige Body Arts. Uh, <laughs> he's always here, never misses a, a live. And Robert Webb is always here as well. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Lost Gallery say, I love my Direct 2, barely use my Halo anymore. Yeah, so a lot of people um, are digging this machine because number one is very, uh, very easy to use. You know, it doesn't require any maintenance. Uh, you can basically power any type of needle. It has so much power. You're going to be able to push anything from a single needle to, you know, 35s if you can find them, uh, or even higher. It has a lot, a lot of torque. So uh, it's not a forgiving machine, meaning that your hand is going to uh, dictate, you know, the way you're going to tattoo and the results. So remember that. No uh, give mechanism on this machine. Now, let me show you uh, this machine with a cartridge grip. So right now, uh, I have right here a matching grip. And the way that I'm going to explain this is the same way that you're going to use a standard needle. But I'm actually at the studio at the house, and I don't have uh, tattoo equipment here. So I have a couple of uh, items. So I'm going to dem uh, demonstrate how to connect the grip and how to mount the needle uh, using this, the, the, the click cargo. And basically, it applies the same for standard standard needle. So we're going to switch cameras again. And the first thing that you're going to do is obviously remove it from the box. So um, there you go. So here we have the machine. Uh, what I recommend you guys do, uh, either with a cartridge grip or standard needles, is drive the needle first. This is going to be the, you know, the easiest way to uh, to get it to get it going. So what you're gonna do is, first of all, loosen the chuck. You don't need to remove it, but loosen the chuck. You know, good enough. Uh, you're gonna drive the needle in this position like this, and you're gonna ensure that you go under the little O-ring or bridge. See, it just went under there. Once you go under, all you're gonna do is like line it up, and, and usually, you know, you go kind of like 45 degree, lean it over, and that's it. I mean, it can't get any simpler than this. So uh, I, I'm really happy about this because one of the things that I always dislike about grommets is always fiddling with them, and sometimes, you know, they are not always the same size, or if you have different machines, uh, they don't always fit the same, and it also varies with different types of needleware where the hoop, you know, is a little bit different. So this armature has, you know, has been done and tested with most popular needles. Uh, so you're gonna be able to fit any type of needle without problem. If by any chance you get a needle that, you know, has the hoop a little bit uh, smaller, well, you know what, just get some pliers, open it a little bit, and, and you'll be just fine. Uh, the next thing is, you know, right now, like I mentioned, I have a cartridge grip, but, you know, it could be a standard, a standard uh, needle, uh, I'm sorry, a standard grip. So we're gonna insert the grip, and in, the, uh, in this case, we have a click ergo right here. And you see the little line right here? This line has to kind of like a line in line with the needle bar. And that means that once you put the cartridge, um, the needle is going to set in the right position for tattooing. So I'm lining those up right, uh, right now. Lock the chuck. And it only takes, you know, very little force. Uh, just, you know, you use two fingers and you could even do it with one hand. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put a cartridge in this machine, and this is what I have right now. I have my have my uh, critical power supply right here. We're gonna connect it, and we are going to run this machine. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is 
just gonna switch to uh, this guy right here. What I'm gonna be doing right now is basically, uh, I am going to run the machine really high so you can feel the sound of the machine without stabilization. So remember, right now I'm using cartridges so um, the grip is actually stabilizing the needle somehow. But uh, remember, this is a rigid bar so uh, you're gonna get that elliptical motion and uh, we can actually get it even better. There are a lot of machines right now, cartridge machines, that have this type of mechanism and one of the things that you have to bear with is actually that sound. So with this machine you can turn that down and let me do it. Right now I'm actually 8.8 uh, .8 volts which is super super high. I'm just probably gonna go to some normal tattooing voltage for you know maybe packing color or black and gray. And what I'm gonna do, switching again to this camera, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually gonna roll this towards this side and you guys can hear how quieter the machine got. So basically what I did is I apply a little bit of tension and that's what I needed to do to actually stabilize the needle. Now, once you do this, you don't wanna overdo it. If you overdo it, you're gonna end up uh, bending the needle like this and you know, creating that curvature and then you know, you're gonna make your motor overwork. So when you're doing this, you just micro dial it, check it out. So I'm gonna actually release it again. Actually, I'm doing the other way. There you go. See, I'm releasing it again, and see how how little I touch this thing. You know, I roll it once, I roll it twice, three, four, and that's it. So don't think that the more you crank it, the better it's going to be, because there's a happy medium in there, and you don't want to overdo it. Now, I want to stop it. One of the things that I'm going to recommend you guys do before you do this, and this is going to actually ensure that this O-ring, which is actually you know friction resistant and uh, chemical resistant, you are going to dab a little bit of ointment right there or if you have lube for, you know, uh, from any other of your machines, you're going to put just a little uh, drop or a little hand there and what that's going to do is going to create a lubrication and it's going to last you throughout the whole tattoo and this rubber you probably are not going to have to ever change it if you do that. However, if in the event you have to change it, I am going to show you guys how to do it and uh, it's very, very simple. So that's that. That's how you uh, use the needle, uh, the needle tensioner, and how you connect the needle right here in the armature. Now, I have a hair here. So, excuse that. So, um, to break uh, to break down the setup is very very simple. You know, in the uh, in the event that you're using cartridges, remove the cartridges always. Uh, then just simply twist the the chuck. Remove the grip right here, and then with your knee, uh, with your nail. I'm gonna do it this way. You're gonna pop it open. That's it. And you're gonna ex extract it from the front or you can, which I don't suggest you do it uh, through the back because probably if your bar is contaminated, uh, you're gonna contaminate the, you know, the, the bar, uh, the machine if you do it like that. So always try to extract it from the front. So kind of like do this and just, you know, it's rubber, just pull out and that's it. So this is, you know, how simple it is to uh, set this machine up and break it down. So if I would want to time myself how long this takes, okay, check it out. You go in, done. You're, we're set. Now you have a grip and done, you're set. So very simple to break down, you know, it takes just literally seconds. So um, this is how you would do it. Now let's move forward to another feature that I really like and this is the uh, the stroke adjustment in this machine. Like I mentioned before, it, it comes, you know, uh, by default with a 3.4 amount already on the machine, but to change is super simple. So what we're gonna do, the first thing is we're gonna remove the motor. So I'm gonna disconnect the motor, quarter turn and pull out. Um, we're gonna locate the little baggie that came with the machine. And also we're gonna remember this little black thing right here, this guy right here. So we're gonna remove this from here, this is the stroke removal tool. Uh, you guys can see it better. It's the little tool right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this thing here under the machine. Uh, the purpose of doing this is that you can actually lock the stroke be because if you don't lock it, this thing, sorry, this thing is gonna spin, 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 spin. You can see that, so by doing so, we're gonna ensure that it's locked and now it doesn't move anymore. So now that we have a lock, we can actually retrieve the Allen key from the little baggie and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove one screw at a time so just positioning one screw you know go maybe a turn or so 
and then do the same on the other one to turn and sew. Uh, and I always recommend that you do this gradually. Uh, this is going to ensure that you never cross thread. So you know, it came right out on its own. So this is the cap. And here we still have the screw. See, we have the two screws. So this is the cap. And this is the armature that is actually mounted on a bearing. So this little bearing with the armature actually floats and the cap is what it sets the stroke. So this is the uh, four millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, we have the 2.8 right here, 2.8. So this is the 2.8 right here. Can you see it? Wow, you can see this in YouTube. I've never seen this before. You can even tell the stroke right here. So I'm very happy about that. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to, Pick up the the little uh, the little bearing with the uh, with the armature uh, the armature clip. We're gonna pop it under, and we're gonna position the armature clip with the bearing and the cap, and we're gonna align the holes. Okay, see, we gotta align them. So we're gonna align the holes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna need the screws from the other cap. So just flip them over, retrieve them. You know, if if they get a little rebellious, you can always poke him with something and force him to come out. So I'm using the same Allen key and I have him right here. So what I'm gonna do is, number one, position the screw right there. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna do probably like one turn and then we're gonna do the same with the other one. You can also just drop the screw right there. And we're gonna give another turn. See what I'm doing right now? So I'm giving a turn, I'm giving another turn and you're gonna press with uh, incremental, uh, kind of like equal balance. So you don't want to over torque this thing when you feel that it stops, stops. Do not over torque it, that's not needed. And you could actually jam the screw. So once you feel you got some tension in there, you know, you're ready to remove the stroke removal tool. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of effort, but uh, it always comes out. And don't, don't ever use, uh, you know, any knife or anything like that, try to remove it. Just with a little bit of patience comes off. So right now we have changed the stroke. So what I'm gonna do right now is again, I'm gonna set up the machine with the needle really quick and show you guys you know, how easy it is to, to use this thing. So we have already done this. Uh, we're gonna connect the motor to connect the motor quarter turn like this. And as you guys have seen in a matter of seconds, you know, I have set up this machine. You know, It's very effortless to actually swap back and forth, um, cut down a lot of the, the setup time in and the annoying uh, breakdown. So here it is, 2.5, I'm sorry, 2.8 millimeter machine. And uh, remember, this is a crossover machine, so you can use it with standard needles. You would do exactly the same thing. And, uh, and that's about it. So what I'm gonna do right now, guys, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna address some of the questions. I'm gonna put the machine on the side. I'm gonna leave it there, actually. And let's see, uh, what are the comments here? Okay, so. A lot of people are loving this machine. Uh, people are waiting on the sign. And we're going to talk a little bit about the sign at the end of this video. And uh, my first ever rotary tattoo machine was the Direct 2. I'm impressed. Uh, that's Tattoo Monkey 13. Thank you so much for, for your feedback. Now, one of the things that I don't like about YouTube Live is that the, uh, the live chat disappears after the video is over. So if you want to kind of like comment in the archive, you would have to actually comment again. So if you guys want to, uh, you know, record your, your comments, uh, once the video is done, you can go over, rewatch it, and, you know, type your comments there. What else? Um, no, the camera fade, what I'm doing right now, uh, this is going to be another live broadcast. I'm actually using a, uh, a program. It's called Wirecast 7. So basically I have two cameras right here set up and through Wirecast, I can actually set the automatic fade and once I choose the camera, uh, it, it fades it. So moving forward, yeah, I run solo guys. So I'm doing all this video solo. Nobody's still assisting me right now. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, I like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I guess I'm win. When will the right angle course be available? I believe the right angle course are already available on the website. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't checked the stock, but you can get those right angle uh, course on the website at fkliners.com. Um, what else? Juan who said, I said, hook me up with that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I can hook you up. Just go to fkliners.com. Uh, there are plenty of color to choose from. Uh, so, all right, guys. So, any questions? I'll be answering some of the technical questions you may have about this machine. Um, like I said, it's very straightforward. It does not require any type of lubrication. 
you know, I mean, the things that may go wrong in this machine are really easy to swap probably after, you know, a couple of years or so. Maybe you want to, I don't know, change the bearing. If you feel that the bearing is a little bit grindy, we sell the spare. Uh, but, it, you know, other, other than that, as long as you take good care of this machine, you're going to have a very tough tattoo machine. And it's also priced right. You know, this machine is $4.99. Uh, uh, very, um, you know, when you compare it to the other machines, we give mechanisms that have a little more parts that are $5.49. Uh, $4.99 gets you uh, this, you know, this amazing piece of equipment. And disclaimer right here, I believe in June, all our machines are going to be like an additional $25 because for the first time in eight years, we're making that small adjustment, you know, just to make sure that we keep things going and, and keep, uh, you know, keep producing product right on the money. So uh, the, the machine features a Maxim motor. Uh, probably some of you may be asking what type of motor this machine uses. And it uses the Maxim motor, the 21-6000. That is a 4.5 watts motor. Very powerful. The one that this machine has, and basically the one that all our machines have right now, uh, is the dual ball bearing preloaded with copper graphite motor. So it is brushed, and I know that there is a little bit of debate about brushes versus brush motor, but brush motors are very, very efficient. This motor is very, very robust, and uh, you're rarely going to have problems with this motor unless, you know, the motor gets dropped or unless, you know, oil gets inside the motor, but in this case, you don't have to lubricate the machine, so not problem right there. Uh, what else? So reading a couple more uh, comments. Which of the machines punch uh, punches harder? I think this probably is one of the hardest puncher machine, and again, because of it doesn't have the give mechanism. It's actually a hard puncher by nature. It's not that it's gonna punch probably harder than an Ajax or a Spectra Halo 2. Like I mentioned before, they use the same uh, motor and the cam system is about the same. It does feel like a, like a harder hit because the machine, you know, it's very simple. The mechanism is very simple. And this machine is an ideal machine for those artists that are looking for uh, the old school, you know, the single pull lines, you know, it's a machine that you can actually run it really, you know, higher than the other machines because of the simplicity of the, the mechanism, you know, running, running the machine a little bit higher. It's not going to translate into more noise or anything like that. So this one, you can definitely run a little bit higher, uh, you know, for power liner. It's going to push anything from a single to like an 18 round with no problem. It's going to push, you know, any kinds of mag and even those, you know, super mags like the 25, the 30, uh, the 35 and whatever larger uh, that uh, that exists out there. So it's going to push anything you throw at it. Uh, what else? Other than that, uh, you know, I recommend this machine for anyone that wants this, you know, easy to use machine that requires no maintenance. A lot of guys that do pointillism like this machine for the sole fact that this machine can be actually dropped really, really low. This machine does not require an stay up spring or anything like that. So it's a direct drive. So you can actually drop it really, really low. And you know what, since we're talking about that, why don't we do a test? Uh, where's the cartridge? I'm gonna drop it really, really low with cartridge. And again, I'm using one of the uh, hardest membrane cartridge right here. So let's see how low we can drop this guy right here. Let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch cameras again. And I'm going to put the power supply right here so you guys can see the number. So let me see if I can put it like that. So we're going to go. There you go. So again, you're, you're pushing a cartridge right here. Let's see, 3.5. Doesn't do it. 4 volts. So at uh, this machine, you can drop it at four volts. And, and again, uh, probably I can drop it even lower now if I release the tension. Let me try this. There you go. Yeah, I had a little bit of uh, excessive tension right there. Uh, if you want to drop it really, really low, maybe uh, just, you know, remove a little bit of tension in this machine. And again, sometimes, you know, nobody's going to want to uh, tattoo that low. I mean, you can, you can literally see the... The needle spinning right there, but yes, definitely you can drop it as you know as as slow as you want in a tattooable uh, manner. So, 
Again, uh, I mentioned this because a lot of those folks that like pointillism, they would actually drive the machine really low. And in fact, if you're gonna be doing pointillism, uh, you probably wanna go with a larger stroke. The one that I have right here is the 2.8. And that leads me to another topic of this video, and it is stroke. You know, a lot of people ask, okay, so the machine comes with a 2.8, comes with a 3.4, and it comes with a four millimeter. So why would you use those different strokes? And the answer, it's very simple. Like I always say in my live broadcast, you know, I always recommend that people stick to the 3.4, you know. It is uh, right there in the middle. It's kind of like long enough for you to do lining, shading, color, but it's not super sure that you're not gonna be able to line. So the 3.4 is going to be an average stroke, and this is why, you know, all of our machines come with a 3.4 everywhere. And right now I can see my microphone right here picking up. Look at, look at this guy creeping on me. There you go. Um, so the 3.4 is the happy medium, you know, for those artists that want to go and just get a stroke and be done with everything, that's the one that I would suggest. Now, a lot of the guys that like, you know, uh, heavy color packing or probably, uh, you know, heavy lining, well, a lot of guys like to alternate stroke and they may use the four millimeter for that. Now, the 2.8 millimeter is a stroke that is, you know, mainly for black and gray and probably color blending. Uh, for transitioning and stuff like that. So the, the super short stroke is gonna allow you to get a faster cycle with less penetration than, you know, lining or color. So therefore, this is why, you know, we recommend that, that setup for, you know, dedicated black and gray. Now, because of the beauty, the beauty of the system that you can actually remove the motor, uh, I've seen a lot of guys at conventions that they have a couple of directs. So they would have a body with a long stroke and maybe one with a short stroke or a medium stroke and a short stroke or, or vice versa. And they would just, you know, basically in the middle of the tattoo, simply swap the motor and have, uh, have this machine set up with another needle. Also, some of the things that I know that a lot of artists are doing with this machine is that they have a standard needle setup, you know, standard needle. And usually I see this happening with liners. You know, there are a lot of folks that like to uh, line with standard needle still. So what they would do, they would have a disposable grip right here, they would have a standard needle, and then they would have for everything else, you know, right next to another setup with cartridge uh, grip, and that's what they would use for their shaders, and perhaps, you know, detailing with some liners for cartridges, and for heavy lining or, or you know, dedicated type of needle that the artist like, they would have another machine. And basically you just pop one and pop the other one. And it also, you know, allows you to use it with uh, with the Spectra Edge X. If you like the Spectra Edge X and you want to have a, a machine with give versus another one with no give. So um, this is it. I mean, very straightforward. Now, let me read some of the other uh, messages that we have here going on. And probably we're going to end this video. We're going to make it very, very short today. Well, I mean, very, very short. At least it's not an hour. What else? There you go. Leonardo Galvan said, I have it and it's amazing, super smooth and lightweight. Okay, man. I mean, I'm glad you uh, you like the machine. He's asking how to uh, uh, take care of the machine and uh, he's uh, mentioning uh, cave aside or wipe, it, wipe down the machine. Just like any machine, I always recommend you bag your machines. And again, uh, bagging the machine is gonna, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna allow you to to keep your your setup cleaner. Now, if you don't like to bag the machine, well, this machine was designed with with materials that are gonna allow you to, you know, to wipe it down after every tattoo. So what I recommend is you always wipe it down rather than spray the machine. And the reason why is because uh, you want to make sure that that liquid, you know, only sits there for the time that the instruction indicates. If you leave uh, that liquid for longer, sometimes that can mess up, uh, you know, the metal or because it starts eating things away. Imagine that it kills everything out there. So uh, that's why you don't want to uh, ever let a machine soak for more than the time that it comes on the label with the product. So wiping it down is the best way. Uh, bagging the machine is even better. And uh, and that's it, you know, you can use this grips and same thing, if you would use a, a click erg, what you would do is the same thing. You would either wrap the grip or you would uh, wipe it down or yes, yeah, spray the grip and then dry it down or autoclave it. Now the machine is not autoclave, okay? So, I mean, actually it could probably be autoclave, but I don't recommend you do it. Um, best way to keep, you know, all the pathogens away, bag your stuff. Moving forward. So Gio Conetta say, I haven't tried the Direct 2 yet, but I've been running the Direct 1 and I love it. Yeah, Gio, I remember when you got that machine. You had that machine for such a long time. And correct me if I'm wrong, have you ever changed any part? I don't think so. Okay. For regular needles, it runs even slower. Exactly. Regular needles, you're going to run even slower because you don't have 
the stay up spring. So probably regular needles, you're gonna run it probably one volt. Uh, ridiculously slow you can run this machine or ridiculously fast. Uh, what else? Uh, Amador is asking for a bigger uh, needle grouping. Do I need a higher? I mean, it all depends, you know, what you're trying to achieve, how you want to approach the tattoo. All I'm saying is that this machine is going to handle what you throw at the machine. It's not going to hesitate to push large uh, grouping. It's not going to hesitate to uh, run uh, very, very slow. It's going to push no matter what you uh, dial the machine at. Uh, shout out from blah blah blah. Awesome for enjoying Garcia. Uh, Prestige Body Arts. Looking into getting a direct from y'all very soon. May swap the Numa soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Numa is a great machine, man. I have a direct two and a Halo two. They are both amazing machines. Thank you so much, Rafael v Villa Lobo. Say the sign release still on June. I'm gonna talk about the sign in just a bit, but uh, this one is going to be about the Spectra uh, direct two. What else? All right, guys, so again, uh, this machine is available right now. Let me actually walk you through. Let me see if I can add this thing right here out of capture, web stream, wirecast, carousel, web display. I'm actually trying to add a new shot right here and capture source. No, I can't do it. No, that wasn't what I wanted to do. It happens sometimes. What I wanted to do is actually walk you through um, walk you through the website. Let me see if I can do it. I'm gonna go to fkirons.com really quick. Bye. So what what I wanted to do is really show. capture device. Anyway. I owe you that for the next uh, next live broadcast. Uh, I'm gonna figure out how to actually uh, share the screen because I can actually share the screen and all that stuff. Now we're gonna be wrapping uh, wrapping this up. And for all of you guys that are asking about the Spectra Scion, the Spectra Scion is healthy, strong, and running. And I have it right here. So this machine is actually going to. Uh, we are aiming for June pre-orders. Okay, right now it seems like pre-orders are gonna be in June. Uh, and look, this is pretty good actually, so you can tell a little bit of the size, the dimensions. All right. These are the dimensions. So it's actually shorter than all the machines with the grip included. Uh, it's going to be launching uh, probably sometimes after, you know, around July. We're working uh, very, very hard. We have some motor updates to let you know. Uh, we're going to be putting a video probably in the next days about the Scion. Um, so guys, this is it for today. Thank you for watching this live broadcast and thank you for your support. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, I'll be doing and popping, you know, sometimes every day. We have a Sunday 8 p.m. live broadcast that I've been doing for uh, many Sundays ago where you can actually interact like this one. You know, we talk about uh, various topics of, of tattooing. So thank you for watching this video. Support us, you know, make sure to... Um, share this video, repost it, and now after this video is done, it's going to be archived, so allow it a second to process, and then you're gonna be able to post it on YouTube or rewatch it if you want. And again, if you wanna make additional comments, make sure to, uh, to use the comment box. So guys, thank you for watching this video, and I'll leave you guys with this machine. Bye-bye.